good morning to everyone. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm a PhD student in the University of Granada, and I'm going to present this work that I have done with my supervisor, Maria Jose Cáceres. Uh, I will start with a brief introduction and description of the model, and then I will comment the state of art in my topic and the results and conclusions of my, my work. Uh, these nonlinear, noisy, leaky, integrated and fire neural models are also known as NNLIF, and they are used to describe the behavior of neural networks. Uh, there are two uh, levels of analysis that are used to describe this model, the microscopic level, in which we consider every single neuron uh, through a system of uh, stochastic differential equations, and also the mesoscopic level, in which we uh, uh, describe the whole system by a uh, representative probability density, uh, which is an average uh, describing the, the behavior of the system. I show here the, a picture of a neuron to say that I'm not working with computer neural network, which is now <laughs> with everyone uh, are doing, but I'm working with uh, biological neurons. And also uh, to show the, like the main uh, variable of the, of the model, which is the, the voltage of the brain, which is the difference between voltage inside and outside the, the neuron. This voltage is going to be affected by a drift towards uh, an equilibrium value um, by the synaptic uh, current that comes from the network. If this voltage uh, reaches a threshold, then the neuron is going to spike and then the, the voltage is, will be reset to some value, okay? And then, we will consider a large number of neurons and this is the equation that will uh, uh, describe the evolution of the voltage. We have here the time derivative of the voltage, the terms the, regarding to the, mm, the drift toward this uh, VL, which is the resting potential, and also the term of the uh, input current, which is due to the synapses. Okay? So uh, here we have the condition we told before. If a neuron uh, reach the firing voltage, then it is reset and instantaneously uh, reset to this reset potential, Br, and this reset potential has to fulfill this inequality. It has to be between the, the resting potential and the firing potential. Uh, the, the form of the uh, the current, the input current, is this one. It's like the sum over all the neurons and all the spikes of this uh, J, which are uh, the synaptic uh, strengths, times Dirac deltas, which are centered in, the, in this uh, time sequence. The time sequence is given by the times of the spikes, the times of every spike, and minus the delay D. The delay is the time between the spike and when the neurons fill the spike, okay? So, uh, as this is very difficult to treat mathematically, we will, uh, under some assumptions, uh, uh, approximate this uh, input current by a einstein uhlenbeck uh, process with mean nu and variance sigma times some uh, independent Gaussian noises. The, the variance sigma usually is given by a constant, and the main value of the current will be given by this connectivity parameter B times a constant plus the firing rate. The firing rate, which is the coupled term of the, of, the, of the system, is the number of spikes per unit time, this N, okay? And B, the connectivity parameter, uh, tells us how excitatory or inhibitory the network is, okay? If B is bigger than zero, then uh, the network will be excitatory, and if B is less than zero, then the network is going to be inhibitory, okay? If B is zero, there is no coupling between the neurons. Uh, okay, then, uh, to write down the equation in a more simple way, we can set the constants to one and shift uh, V by this factor, and then the equation is written in this way. Uh, after that, if we consider an infinity number of neurons, we can apply the mean field limit, to define this quantity, which is called uh, the, the expectation of the spike train or the speaking process. 
the expectation is the total number of spikes, uh, which counts like every time that a neuron has um, approach to the to the to the firing threshold divided by the total number of neurons. Okay. Uh, so uh, if we take into account that the the time derivative of the expectation is equal to the firing rate, we can write the equation this way. And this will be the equation that we are going to simulate, okay, in the for uh, obtaining our numerical results. Uh, we will simulate one uh, a system of an equation of this type, of this type, one per uh, each neuron. So also in this mean field limit, we can define the probability density of finding neurons with potential b at time t which uh, fulfills this Fokker plan like equation where we have uh, the time derivative of p, we have the drift uh, term, we have the diffusion term, and we also have here the reset condition, which is this direct delta center at the reset potential times the firing rate. Uh, usually the, the, the diffusion coefficient will be a constant also, and the, the drift coefficient will be minus the voltage plus uh, the connectivity parameter times the firing rate. Okay, here we have the nonlinearity of the system. Okay, this is the nonlinear term. Uh, we also impose the, the boundary condition that the probability density has to be zero at the firing uh, potential and also at minus infinity. And we uh, define the Finding rate in the following way, as the flux of neurons at the uh, threshold potential, minus the derivative of p at the firing potential. Okay, and this guarantees the, that the integral in all the voltage space of the probability density is equal one. So let's uh, say something about the state of the art uh, regarding to my topic. I will focus only in the global X system versus the blow up and only for positive B, okay? And that is wrong. It's only B bigger than zero. So uh, what we understand at blow up if, is that in the event that the, the firing rate diverges, okay? Infinite time. So there is some time in which the firing rate becomes infinity. Uh, um, after that time, we, we say that usually there is not classical solution X system. Okay, so from the microscopic point of view, what happened there is that all the neurons spike at the same time. Uh, for the global existence, we have different situations. When we consider a synaptic delay, the D bigger than zero and without delay. Without delay, we know that if B is low enough and the initial conditions are not very close to the firing threshold, then we have a uh, uh, converges to the, uh, the system converges to the steady state. We have to suppose that the steady state exists. Okay, the, I think that there is not rigorously proved that the steady state exists in, in this case. I mean, exists, but there is global existence of the solution. Also, for d equal zero, if b is big enough and the initial condition is is close to the threshold, we know that there is blow up infinite time. Uh, for uh, ah, we also know uh, unless I think it is not rigorously proved. Also, but uh, we know that with uh, no steady states, there is blow up always. Okay. Uh, in the simulation, we, we can see that, and there are also analytical works done by Rox and Salot, which points out in this direction. Uh, for a positive um, transmission delay, we know that there is global existence of solution. Okay. However, uh, the firing rate can be increasing, but not diverges. Okay. So, what we will see, we, we will see in the simulation all these situations, and also we will see a new notion of solution, in which, which is called physical solution, in which, in which uh, we allow the expectation to be discontinuous, and then we can see what happens after the blow up. We can see what happens when uh, n diverges. Okay. So. Uh, for the 
In numerical results, we have used the uh, Euler Maruyama scheme for extractive differential equations. And we have set the rest, the rest potential at one and the um, firing potential at two. Okay? So the difference between firing and rest potential is one. Uh, then in this picture, you can observe uh, the intersection between the straight line one and these curves means number of uh, existence of a steady state for that value of n. So as we can see, depending on the connectivity parameter b, we have different regimes of behavior of the solution. If b is less than uh, this different, less than one in our case, then we have only one steady state, the purple line, you can see, only one intersection. If b is one, we, hang, we have a uh, lowest steady state, but we also have uh, another one at infinity, okay? If b is bigger than one, we can uh, have these two different situations, the one with two steady states and the one without steady states. So we will see uh, anyway separate. As initial conditions for the simulation, we will always use a uh, Dirac delta near to the finding threshold. So whenever possible, blow, us, blow up will happen, okay? Okay, for the first case in which we have uh, B, uh, we are in the low connectivity regime, and we know that it's only one steady state, we can apply the notion of physical solution. Uh, we can like, continue the simulation after a discontinuity in the expectation. So, as you can see here, the, in the upper part, you can see the values of the expectation here, you have a discontinuity of the expectation, which means that there is blow up, but after the blow up, uh, the, the value of the expectation is controlled. And you can also see here how after the beginning, this is the, the time evolution of the voltage distribution. You can see how after the beginning of the simulation, all the neurons are reset, and then it, uh, it goes to the steady state, which is the yellow one. Here in the final, in the last picture, you can see the comparison between the, the data from the simulation and the, the theoretical steady state of fokker planck equation, which are the same. For the uh, case where there is two steady states, as long as we cannot apply the physical solution, then there is blow up and then there is nothing after that. We only have what we call trivial solution, which is all the neurons concentrate in a Dirac delta in the rest of potential and always firing all time, okay? Uh, if we apply delay to this case, this case that we have nothing after the blow up, then we avoid the blow up, we control the firing rate, you can see the firing rate here and here for different values of the delay, and then the system does not uh, collapse or blow up. What happens is that the system uh, tends to this, what we call a plateau distribution, okay? The yellow one. You can see here the time evolution of the distribution also here, and you can see the plateau distribution of the final result. For B big enough in the sense that we don't have any steady state, we, we get the same. If we don't apply delay, then system collapse, okay? If we apply delay, we control the firing rate and, when, and then we obtain also this plateau distribution. You can see here and here for different values of the delay, okay? If we are in the limit case, the case when B is equal to Bf minus Br, equal one in a case, and then we have one lowest steady state and another one at infinity, we have an interesting thing that even without delay, okay, the left part is without delay, we obtain this plateau distribution. Instead of blowing up, the system goes to this distribution which seems to be the, this steady state infinity in some sense, okay? And in the, a case with delay, with a small delay, we also have the same situation. If we apply a very big delay, like here, we can avoid the plateau distribution. With a very big delay, we uh, avoid this distribution and then go to the lowest steady state, okay? As you can see here, when the uh, value of delay increase, okay? 
the power is the higher at the same time that the other uh, distributions. And then, okay, and what uh, do we know about this plateau distribution? We, we know that the solution of the stationary uh, problem, which are these, are, uh, when n increase, are similar to the plateau distribution. You can see here the comparison between the plateau distribution found in the simulation, which is the yellow one, the yellow line, and these profiles when n increase. You can see the, this orange one is the higher of these profiles, something very similar to the plateau. So are these distributions steady state of the system? No, it cannot be, because we need to be a steady state of the system that did n tilde is equal to the n inside the profile. And this does not happen in this case, okay? So the system converges to this kind of plateau distributions when the n increase in the case where, where we have delay, for example, and then the global existing is granted. We don't know, but we are studying now that analytically. Uh, we know that the limit of when n tends to infinity of these profiles are indeed the plateau distribution, which is here. We know also in the case where b is equal to the difference between bf and br, that the plateau distribution is indeed uh, the steady state in when n tends to infinity. And we uh, are trying to study the decay periods as a sequence of pseudo steady states and then prove some kind of convergence. To the, to the plateau distribution. So, uh, what uh, are the conclusions of the, the conclusions of the of the work? First, without delay, we know that in the lower case, low connectivity regime, we uh, blows up and then we go to the steady state. In the high connectivity regime, we uh, the system collapse and go to that trivial state, and with uh, the, in the limit case, we tend to the plateau. And with, with delay, we know that in the higher regime, we go uh, also to the plateau distribution, even if there is no steady state. And in the limit case, we also go to the, to the plateau if the, if the delay is not too large. You can see these results uh, more in the paper published uh, by Maria Jose Cáceres and myself uh, recently. So thank you for your attention. I'll be checking whether there are um, questions from the YouTube channel, which there aren't at the moment. Any questions from the audience in person, in presence? Thank you for your talk. I have a, a, a very technical question about the, the stochastic presentation of the solution in the case where B is uh, bigger than VF minus VR. Do you know any result about the existence of a solution to this equation? Hmm? Sorry? Do you know if someone proved that there exists a solution to this equation? Uh, I mean, in the, in the case where... Uh, I remember... B is bigger... Uh, B is, is bigger than VF minus VR. I mean, you can have local existence, but there is no global existence uh, under some conditions. I mean, there is uh, only if proof the, for the nonlinear system. It is only proof the global system if B is very small. For positive B, only very small. There is no even a proof for B equal to BF minus B. We are trying to prove the existence with a different argument. We let uh, B has uh, any, any value, but then we impose to the delay to be very high. So if the delay is very high, it's similar to, it's like another perturbation uh, argument around the linearity. And we are trying to do that. And with uh, deterministic tools, it's proved that there is a solution to the nonlinear linear Fokker equation for large B. Uh, can you repeat this? If you consider the, the deterministic uh, view, mm -hmm. uh, it's proved that there exists a solution to the Fokker-Planck uh, equation for large or any B. If, if, if in the linear system. No, in the nonlinear system. In the nonlinear system, I, I don't know. I, I think. I mean, in I think that if you, I mean, for the 
one linear system in this system uh, here. In this yes. system, uh, it is not proof the 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 global existence uh, unless the the b this b is very small. No. And I, I think that in there is no any other situation. I mean, you can have b uh, less than zero, the inhibitor case, and then it is proof also b equals zero. But uh, for the connectivity, uh, for the excitatory case, I think it is not proof anyway. Thank you. Any more questions? I'll give you an absolutely non-technical question from, you know, uh, my, my, probabil my probability theory is sketchy at best, so keep these in mind. Um, so you talk about uh, what happens after a blow up, and I'm trying to make sense of that. Do we really, do we really mean that you consider solutions after the time t at which the firing rate explodes, mm. and you're trying to make sense of what happens from that moment onwards? Yeah. Or is, this, is there something that I'm missing in that? You, you don't go through this continuity here, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, as long as the firing rate is equal to the derivative of the expectation, uh, when we say that in this notion of solution, but were, was, uh, work, uh, was stated in a work by uh, De La Rue, Inglis, Duntale, and Tangle, uh, they, they allow the expectation to be discontinuous, but they, they impose a, a condition in the discontinuity. The condition is, um, I mean, not rigorously talking that, uh, no neurons can uh, spike twice at the same time. So uh, while this condition uh, holds, you can uh, have a discontinuity in the expectation and then the firing rate can diverge and you can see what is, I mean, after that, it can like uh, be controlled. Thank you. Welcome. Any more comments or questions? I'll cross-check if there are questions uh, on YouTube. So there is a question from Benoit Pertam. Did you observe periodic solutions with other regularization? Mm -hmm. So the question that's been asked is, did you observe periodic solutions with other regularization? No, I mean, uh, we, we observe uh, periodic solution, we only observe with in the inhibitory case and with a refractory period. In this case, when there is no refractory period and only delay, we, we didn't observe it in the simulations. And we proved a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> OK. There are no more questions. I think we should thank uh, all there this. Another question. Oops, there was one. There we go. Uh, in the case of the blow up in finite time, did you compute the divergence rate, like the speed at which n of t diverges to infinity? Mm -hmm. And what is it? I mean, uh, uh, so uh, is something uh, like this? I mean, the the firing rate diverges. No. Oh yes, but at which rate? Like one over square root of t, one over t, well, one over t minus uh, the like, uh, which is the speed. I mean, I, I don't know. I only know that the firing rate diverges to remember the speed of the divergence. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? If not, let's thank Alejandro, Sunil, and uh, Yuri for a very interesting day. Thank you.